Yo, how you doing? My name is Corey, your friendly neighborhood massage technician. And today we are going or starting our body part zodiac series uh, <laughs> on the new moon, starting with Aries. Um, working our way down the body uh, through zodiac signs um, of self massage techniques and uh, body movements and body weight centric exercises that we can use for each body part of the zodiac sign. For this series or for this session, if you will, uh, we'll be starting on the new moon Aries. So we'll be working with the head. And of course, we're going to be working our way down the body for each particular month on the new moon. Um, and I guess to go through that real quick, I, we got Aries, the head, we got Taurus on the neck, we got Gemini with our arms to the hands, we have Cancer with our chest and diaphragm, we have Leo back and spine, we have Virgo, let me check, it's digestion, abdomen, we have Libra, which is the butt, we have Scorpio, which is the genitals and the pelvic floor, we have Sagittarius, which goes into the hips. We have Capricorn, which goes into the knees and the skeletal system in general, but like particularly associated with the knees. Um, we have Aquarius, which is the bottom parts of our legs, which is the calf and the ankles, and then Pisces, which is our feet. So we'll go down each of these areas of the body by month, and I'll give you some massage techniques, go over some body parts associated with that area, you know, nomenclatures, things of that nature, then go into some self-massage techniques, then go over a particular movement, like a range of motion, or we'll go over a, a body weight centric exercise to use. And um, I guess to explain that, um, in essence, the, the exercises or the movements that I'm looking to build within the body or for you all is, um, is to enhance, if you will, or strengthen our activities of daily living, which is usually associated with ADLs is what they call it. Um, and pretty much those are the movements or the, you know, the, the positions that we find ourselves in every single day. Like uh, if we're in an office, we're sitting down in a sitting position, if you will, arms propped up doing our typing. Maybe we drive to work every day, so we're up in the same position sitting in doing our little driving thing, getting up and down inside of the seat of the car. If we're, you know, uh, on construction and bending down, picking things up, maybe your electrician, uh, you know, doing some wires, having our hands up all over the place. We got kids, we're holding them in our arms, you know, uh, you know, associated with our back and how it's strengthening our arms, so to speak. So all of these general things that we do on a daily basis of course like we're doing them every day so our body is being strengthened by it but at the same time it 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 gives us a greater sense of ease efficiency and effectiveness with those movements if we're focusing on them in a particular like daily movement routine or daily exercise routine to help strengthen the areas of the body that we use every single day and that is my goal to go over this these areas of the body and give you something that you can use on a daily basis a daily basis which again like the exercise you don't need to do them uh to failure if you will it's more so like doing these exercises to appreciation to you feel it or like if it's just a range of motion you know just in, uh, just getting the full range of motion out of the particular exercise. For Aries, we'll be going over the eyes and I'll show you some range of motion and give you an example of what I'm talking about uh, when we go to that part of this video. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, again, we are new moon Aries, so we're going to be working with the head. So I'm going to go over some of the nomenclatures of some of the areas that we'll be working with today. Um, then go over, uh, I guess you call like the purpose of said areas of the body. Then go over some general self massage techniques that you can use uh, for this area of the body. We're going to be working with more or less the cranium, some around the occipital bones of the eyes, uh, and definitely working with the jaw bone and the mandible 
you know, to release some tension in those particular areas. And then just go over some uh, a general movement routine that you can use for your eyes on a daily basis to help, you know, strengthen your eyes and uh, give you greater use of your sense of seeing, if you will. So with that, nomenclature. So starting from the top, this area of the head here is generally the cranium, which is the skull. Um, it is from uh, the front part of the teeth, if you will, all the way up to the top of the head. Um, the mandible itself here, this is a separate part of the skull and not necessarily attached to it. All this uh, teeth up is the cranium. Um, at the top here, uh, it looks like it's a whole, I guess you could call it um, a whole bone. But actually, at the on our head, it's like kind of broken up into plates that they call sutures, almost kind of like a Pangea of Earth, like when all of the plates were together. It's kind of how your head is kind of like caught in together with like, uh, I guess, held together with um, ligamental tissues and things of that nature. So there's sutures at the top part of your head that's holding this whole plate together and plus that also those plates if you will they are moving uh, it kind of gives your brain breathing room you can lightly feel them if you're like really being sensitive to like the top part of your head but you know in general like it's for one there's movement in the skull so it provides movement in the skull and two um it help hold your head together <laughs> right um so with that uh, going down here is our occipital bone, which houses our eyes. We have our nasal bone, which houses our nose. We have our mandible, which is primarily this muscle. You can kind of go into the cheekbone here and feel like how thick the jaw bone if, or mandible, if you will, is. It's a very, very thick muscle. I mean, it has to be your, it, it helps you chew food and talk all day you know uh, it's moving all the time for the most part so it's generally here and it goes like almost up to like the top part of the temple if you will up to this general area and kind of houses itself down here on the jawbone in this general area here so those are the nomenclatures of the areas that we'll be working with today for Aries dealing with the head you know what I mean so in essence oh, the purpose of these areas of the body, the cranium, I kind of explained in a sense, uh, the sutures and how they're used to work. It kind of gives your brain some breathing room and kind of, again, holds your head together. Um, occipital houses your eyes. It gives uh, a central protection of the eyes. The nasal bone doing the same thing. Uh, gives you passageway of air, if you will. And jawbone, of course, is to, um, one, eat food or to chew food break down food um, and to talk and express yourself through words or sounds, syllables, syntaxes, things of that nature. So, you know, um, that, that's the general sense of the skull area and what it's attempting to do. Of course, there is the ear, the ear canal, uh, which again allows sound to come into your head. The eardrum is kind of uh, interpreting the sound that's coming into your head while your brain is uh, giving you what it uh, interprets as sound, right? <laughs> you know, um, it, it's all interpretation, if you will. Your brain is interpreting what it sees, it's interpreting what it hears, it's interpreting what it tastes, and all of those things. We don't necessarily know what it is. Our brain is telling us what these things are and how they feel, if you will, or what they look like. But anyway, just a general thoughts, if you will. <laughs> so with that, let's go over some massage techniques that we can use for our skull, the skull area to help release some tension at any point of our day. So real quick, as far as equipment that we're using, I'm only using a desk here so that I can prop my hands up on the table and use my hands to do my massaging techniques. So we're gonna start with the top part of the skull, the cranium, and just generally I like to use uh, like clamping my hands together, if you will, and clamping them on the top of my head and just kind of giving some presses into my skull. 
all the way around as far as I can. You can turn it around to the front area and squeeze on the sides, if you will. Also, you can clamp your hands together, like the back parts of the palm. I like to use this technique and just kind of rolling on the top of my head, if you will. And this gets the center areas of the skull. You, I mean, me personally, I definitely feel some tension and uh, in the center parts of my skull. So wherever you find those tense areas, those areas of high sensation, you can sit there for a little while and hold the pressure there. And uh, eventually over time by holding the pressure, um, the sensation will tend to dissipate a bit sometimes, not all the time, but you know, it'll definitely help relieve some of the tension that's in your head definitely good for relieving head tension head aches frontal head headaches um there's another word i want to use here tension headaches uh these this particular technique is very good to help relieve that so in the same sense using the same technique you want to just sit here and roll the skin around on our skull and just again just getting some movement of the skin this generally helps the blood flow in and around the head, get into the places that it needs. Uh, and, and it generally just feels good just to move the skin around on the head. Um, and again, same thing. I'm like, I'm holding my head and I'm kind of digging my fingers into my skull. So there's somewhat of a massage that's going on as I'm moving the skin around on the top part of my head so this is very helpful again you find some good spaces you can kind of sit there dig around go deep into some of those areas that you kind of feel uh, an attraction to if you will and uh and see how much of that pressure you can relieve so that's that that's generally for the head we're moving down towards the frontal part of the head here with our full head, if you will. Um, some techniques that I like to use is kind of the same way. I'm like going towards the front part of the head, like so, and just wiping my forehead across like this. So it's just generally wiping, and this kind of just helps to stretch the skin, just stretch the skin on the forehead. Uh, the general rule of thumb when um, doing massages on the face and around the face, because over time, as as we age, the skin um, loses its elasticity and begins to droop, and that's what we call wrinkles. So, for doing massage work to help alleviate the wrinkles or the the elasticity that we're losing, we generally massage up, massage up the face. So, as I'm doing this technique, I'm moving my hands up my forehead like that. So. And also, again, depending on where you're at on your head, this technique you can use all over your head, so to speak. And it's a general motion up, lifting like around the eye bags, around cheekbones, you can go all the way around the head, wherever you like with this technique, it's very useful. Uh, but again, uh, if you're looking to alleviate wrinkles, I know there's some people that may actually like their wrinkles and they like the way it makes them look mature and that's cool but you know for those who don't necessarily want to look so mature just yet um the general rule of thumb is to massage up massage up your face wherever you happen to be right so with that we go towards our temple here uh how i like to massage my temple is with my thumbs and again using that same like clamping hand technique just kind of uh, have something to brace or you can use this table to help brace your um, brace your arms so that you can kind of rest while you're doing these exercises and just giving general circles clockwise counterclockwise and, and you just kind of sit there and, and just enjoy the relief of it <laughs> it definitely feels good uh, just to get some get some massage in the temple area, oh, feels really good. 
wherever you find that tension, just go ahead. You can hold your hands there if you like it, kind of sit there and kind of dig into it a little bit to help release some of that pressure. Uh, it feels really good. And uh, in the same area, like I said, like the, the mandible or the jaw starts up here at the top part of the temple. So a good stretch that you can do to help stretch your jaw out is holding, holding your temple, right? Uh, putting good pressure on your temple and just opening your jaw all the way uh, to its capacity, to say, like, so, and it uh, helps you stretch your jawbone. You'll definitely feel it like inside of your hands. You'll feel that stretch happening as you open ah, your mouth. It feels really good. Not like it. But with that, you can kind of wipe your face off a little bit. Kind of move things around. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. So now we're going to go towards this jawbone. Again, you can come at this in several different angles. You can come from the inside like around the cheekbone, as I was alluded to earlier. And you can dig from the inside, like putting fingers, maybe two or three fingers into the area of that uh, mandible. And you can dig into that cheekbone and kind of get some relief out that way. Again, I'm propping my elbow up here to kind of get some relief. So I don't necessarily got a strain to do this exercise or this self-massage. Uh, you can kind of clamp down, if you will, on like the entire mandible and like give a pinch, if you will, of this general area, which also feels good. Uh, it helps release some of that tension in the jaw. And uh, uh, probably one of my best techniques that I like to use is by using the palm and uh, sinking into a good portion of that mandible and just propping your head up onto your palm and just kind of uh, move slightly around on that mandible. If you find a good spot, like, like right there, allow, allow your jaw to relax and just kind of sit in it a little bit. Feels really good. <laughs> you know, you may start to get a little bit of saliva that develops there. Uh, it's, very common sign of relief but yeah it's a very good relaxed position to not only not only relax your head but to also relieve tension in the jaw it feels really good of course you want to do that do your exercises on both sides both sides of the face if you will and something that i miss uh, uh around this uh eye socket occipital bone um, there is a pressure point that I really like to use. Um, this is very uh, good relaxing. Well, I mean, it doesn't necessarily feel relaxing because you, if you develop a lot of tension in this area, you will definitely feel it when you press into it. But um, it's an acupressure point called drilling bamboo. And it's really good to relieve frontal head tension. I mean, uh, relieve pressure in the sinuses, um, to relieve eye stress, if you will. And it's, Generally, at the top part of your eyebrow, if you will, you feel the inside of your occipital bone there. You want to see, find that little space where it is in your, like, kind of on the inside of the occipital bone there. You can prop your elbows down on that desk and kind of hold your head down and allow the weight of your head to sit on your thumbs. And you'll feel the pressure on that eye socket and it'll start to radiate pretty much all the way around your eyes. Uh, this is, whew, whew, and you definitely feel the relief in the eye socket. If you have some tension headaches that you're dealing with, this is a pretty good point to come to to see if, if some of the tension, if you will, is in your eyes, especially like say if you're someone that works on the computer all the time, like myself, you're staring at the screen all day, it's coming here like maybe like once every hour or so, or just after your day of work, just kind of sit inside of that eye socket. It's, it's, it's good fun. <laughs> so uh, going back down the jaw, um, the last part I wanted to relate to is underneath the 
mandible, if you will, underneath the jaw. You go inside of the jawbone and underneath here, there's also some mandible uh, uh, connections, if you will. And you can dig your thumbs, uh, propping my elbows up on the table, and you can dig onto the inside of the jawbone and just work your way around the inner portion of your jaw. See if you can find some places of high tension. You can sit in those areas and dig a little bit deeper. See if you can relieve more tension then. Uh, leave, relieve more tension there. Just kind of work into it, feel it around. All right, so go ahead and again, shake it out if you will. You shake out your face. Kind of roll it around if you will you can use your hands and and loosen your jaw and shake it kind of helps again just to shake things out loosen it up get some relief so with that that is a general self-massage so working through the cranium getting on some of the temple we're going drilling bamboo acupressure point help relieve some eye tension you can go down to the mandible area or get that uh a mandible stretch the jaw you know, working to the jaw here from the inside, if you wish, and squeezing the, the mandible, if you will. Or you can, again, just rest rest on it, if you will, like so, and working on the inside part of the jaw. So those are all some really good areas to release some tension in your face. So for the activity of daily living, or should I say the, the movement that we're going to be using for our new moon Aries is... Just working the eyes. And it's just gonna go over the, all the general ranges of motion that our eyes can move into. And more so just trying to move through them smoothly and accurately. And you'll notice that like sometimes as you move your eyes, like if you're like trying to keep yourself stable, your head stable, your body stable, you'll notice that there's this uh, inkling, if you will, to turn your neck as you turn your eyes. But so you're trying to alleviate that and to isolate our eyes and move just our eyes in these general directions, right? So you go from left to right, just left, right. Try to make the movements as smooth as you possibly can. Then going up, down, up, down. Trying not to move our head in the process as we move our eyes. And generally circles from right, right, and left. Again, notice if you are wanting to move your head as you move into a general direction with your eyes. Definitely try to keep your body still as possible as you go through all these ranges of motion with your eyes. And this, of course, is the exercise you can do on a daily basis whenever you feel called. Um, it is definitely good to be consistent with these type of exercises to help build continuity and to, you know, help build on your strength and efficiency with these particular exercises. But it's definitely good to, you know, help strengthen your eyes, strengthen the movement of your eyes and to keep your eyes healthy and strong. So with that, that is our series for Aries We're working with the head. Um, come next new moon, we'll be working with the neck area in Taurus, which also has a general focus on the throat and the vocal cords. So we may find some ways into working those areas and definitely look into doing some self massage techniques for the inner part of the neck which is usually um, not so um, uh, it's not an area that we generally tend to massage even as massage therapists so it's it's good to know how to target these areas and get around the uh the your the adam's apple if you will and to target some of these like the scalenes and the uh scm I can't think about the entire name of it, but I'll come back to you next month and tell you what that name is. Yeah. Uh, I'll come back to it. 
<laughs> but yeah, so generally that's what it is. Uh, thank you all for listening. I hope this is helpful, the self massage techniques and the movements that we're going through. And stay tuned next month uh, where we'll be going over the other body parts of the Zodiac. So stay blessed and be well.